At one o'clock in the morning, April 24th, 1862, all hands were called. Four thousand men in the darkness aboard 17 ships tensed for battle. They were about to steam into the crossfire between Forts Jackson and St. Philip, an absolute hell. Each of Farragut's vessels will forge its way upriver against the current in the moonlight and be in the crossfire for 30 minutes or more. The anticipation of war heightened awareness in some, goosebumps on others. To slow the Union fleet, the Confederates had strung a chain barrier across the river in front of Fort Jackson, supported by eight dismasted schooners, all anchored to the river bottom. Farragut divided his fleet into three divisions. Cayuga took the point position in the first division, Pensacola, Mississippi, Oneida, Varuna, Cotton, Caneo, and Wissahickon followed. They forced an opening through the chain barrier. The center division, led by flagship Hartford with Admiral Farragut aboard, included Brooklyn and Richmond. At 3.55 a.m., Hartford steamed through the barrier and opened her bow gun on Fort Jackson. The powder monkeys were feeding the gunners with silk sacks of explosives. Farragut climbed into the mizzen for a better look at Fort Jackson. The American flag was drawing metal like a magnet. A shell ripped into the main mast. Farragut held on. It was as if the artillery from heaven were playing upon earth. Shortly past 4 a.m., the 3rd Division, led by Captain H.H. H. Bell, steamed ahead. A rebel fire raft approached Hartford's port side. Horace Sherman in the tugboat Mosier pushed the raft into the flagship. She looked doomed for certain. Farragut shouted, my God, is it to end this way? Another enemy shell crashed through the upper deck and exploded in the cabin. Farragut's world was ablaze. The crew blasted the fire raft away from Hartford. Farragut took her upstream as the fires were extinguished. She would now assist in the fight with the rebel flotilla. Captain Thomas T. Craven in Brooklyn Disoriented by heavy smoke and spun by eddies in the current, spent nearly 90 minutes in the gauntlet. Brooklyn was attacked by the ram Manassas and jarred from stem to stern. Commander J. Alden and Richmond steamed through the opening, engaged Fort Jackson, crossed the river, and gave Fort St. Philip a few broadsides. Panola was battered by the forts. Kennebec had problems similar to Brooklyn coming through the barrier. Itasca and Winona formed on Kennebec. All three vessels were repulsed by the forts with heavy damage. They joined Porter's mortar fleet below the forts to wait for news from Farragut. An armed Confederate flotilla waited just upriver from Fort St. Philip. Young Lieutenant Perkins and Cayuga were first to emerge from the smoke. He saw no one behind him. Eleven rebel gunboats descended on him. Cayuga steered toward them, firing at close range. Out of the smoke came Commander S.S. Boggs and Varuna. She passed through the barrier and sprinted past the forts without casualties, but her boilers had been damaged. Captain Beverly Kennan of the Louisiana gunboat Governor Moore spotted Varuna and began the chase. As they closed, Kennan fired his 32-pound bow gun downward, directly through his own deck, and raked Varuna fore and aft. Varuna sheared off and fired a broadside that swept Governor Moore's deck. Kennan took the helm and rammed Varuna just abaft the main mast. Confederate ram Breckenridge joined the action and rammed Varuna again. She filled rapidly and made for the riverbank, grounding just before she sank. Oneida came up and opened on Governor Moore, driving her ashore where she surrendered the remainder of her crew. On his way out of the smoke, Farragut came abeam the USS Mississippi. He yelled to her captain, Run down the ram! Meaning Manassas. With Mississippi bearing down, Lieutenant Alexander F. Worley and Manassas mustered steam and drove onto the bank just above Fort St. Philip. Worley cut her pipes and sent the crew out the forward gun ports and into the swamps. They set the ram on fire. 
Manassas later broke loose from the shore, drifted downriver, exploded, and sank. Her commander, Charles F. McIntosh, was killed on her deck. He was not the only fatality that day. 36 Union soldiers were dead, and 135 more were badly wounded. Farragut wrote to his wife, I shall only tell you that it has pleased Almighty God to preserve my life through a fire such as the world has scarcely known. I shall return properly my thanks, as well as those of our fleet, for His goodness and mercy. The Union fleet stood off New Orleans at 1 o'clock p.m. on April the 25th, one day after running the gauntlet. Thousands gathered at the levee in disbelief and watched them anchor off Canal Street. Farragut staggered the ships in bow and quarter line with starboard broadsides bearing directly on the city and port broadsides bearing on Algiers directly across the river. Young George Cable wrote, The scene was silent, grim, and terrible, black with men, heavy with deadly portent. The long banished stars and stripes flying against a frowning sky. 